Hello and welcome to another Mixed Media Monday. I'm Eric Scott, and after a couple of weeks off, I'm back and I'm here to make some art. Um, so the last couple of weeks I was traveling and found it kind of hard to sit down and make um, a video for Mixed Media Monday. So, um, but I'm back and just going to continue with what I'm doing. And remember, the the idea behind this video isn't for you to make exactly what I'm making, but just to kind of show you how easy it is to build things up. I think a lot of times folks kind of feel like, oh, I can't, I can't do that. It's so complicated. But even a lot of complicated things are just broken down into simpler steps. So um, I'm just here, try to do this every week to just to kind of walk you through some easy steps to make some layered mixed media pieces. So um, anyway, let's go ahead and dive into today's project. Okay, so I've got my four by four inch piece of mixed media paper. This is a Strathmore 400 series piece that I trimmed down. I've got some paints and some brushes, my water cups up here. Um, got some other stuff kind of spread around. Um, I was kind of like thinking about like, oh, how can I get this started? A lot of times I start with paint or with lines or with watercolor pencils. I thought I'd start with an image. And uh, so this is a photocopy. It's a brain image that I've been using for quite some time. And it's just kind of the right size. So I think I'm going to put it on here, um, but I'm going to image. I'm going to do an image transfer. So I'm not going to collage it on. Uh, so I want to do an image transfer. This is a black and white um, photocopy. So it's a toner based image. So I'm going to turn it over, and you can kind of see the brain through it. I'm going to transfer the toner to the surface of my paper using one of these markers. I I've used them before. Um, it's a chart pack add marker and it's their blender marker and so it's got a chemical in there it's kind of stinky so if you're sensitive to chemicals you you don't want to use it but um, you can also use a, a household chemical called goof off as long as it has xylene in it and so I'm going to color on the back and that's going to soak through and kind of soften the toner and I've got a couple here because they're kind of they're kind of to the point where they're almost running out um, and so I'm going to hold it nice and still and just going to quickly get this marker on the back. And you can see how it saturates the back and it's already starting to kind of dry out. It's a problem, the markers, the markers don't last a long time and oftentimes they dry out. So, you know, I have a few of them around that I try to try to use. So what I like about this image transfer technique is that I can really do it at any stage um, but it really makes a great way to kind of get things started. All right, so I'm going to let that sit for a moment, and then I'm going to grab a wooden spoon, um, and I'm going to rub it. I'm going to burnish the back of it. Now, the marker may have burnished it as I was, like, you know, coloring it down, um, but this is just really going to make sure that that toner transfers. So I'm going to hold it so it doesn't move, and I can pick it up. You can see how it's transferred, but Kind of down here hasn't totally transferred. So let's go ahead and rub that. I like to use a small image just because slowly the chemical evaporates. That's what I like is that this chemical evaporates, but it's really, it's a harmful chemical. Um, the markers are not AP non-toxic because of it. Um, and so, you know, use it in a well-ventilated area. All right, so I've burnished it. In there. Okay. So it's not a perfect transfer. I mean, this has a lot more kind of gray areas. This really, the blacks have transferred and it's kind of grainy looking, but I kind of like that. So um, that's the nice thing about transfers is that it's not a, it's not a perfect process. If you wanted it to be perfect, then I would just collage it on. Um, now, most of that chemical has evaporated, but I'm going to help it evaporate completely. Make sure that this is nice and dry. I'm going to use my hair dryer. So you could do this technique with some other solvents like citrusol. I've heard wintergreen, excuse me, wintergreen oil works well. I haven't used either of them, but from what I understand, they leave kind of an oily residue. What I like about the xylene, it totally evaporates. And so the nice thing is that there's no oily residue um, and I can go ahead and I can just 
work on top of it. Now, it can change the sizing of the paper. So if you're not too familiar with what kind of makes up paper, um, there's a, I want to say, it, I want to call it a chemical, but it's not like a harsh chemical. Um, sizing is a, an additive that they put on paper and sometimes they put it in paper. And what it does, it really treats the surface of the paper and determines how quickly the um, material soak through. So that's why, like with this mixed media paper and watercolor paper, you know, it's like the, the paint just doesn't get like sucked right into the paper. Um, sometimes you may have used a paper where you're like, oh, it's really thin and it kind of gets sucked through. It's not so much how thin it is, it's the sizing, the, the, that treatment of the surface. And with this, you can see it doesn't, you know, it really doesn't change it. I can paint right over top of it. And that toner is not going to go anywhere because it's a plastic based thing. All right, so I'll go ahead and dry that. Okay, so I'm just going to build up like I like I've done many times before. So I've got the watercolor. Um, the nice thing about starting with the image transfer is that I can keep the contrast. Sometimes I find that as I build these first layers and then want to do the image transfer on top, sometimes I make the color too dark and then the image transfer just doesn't work all that well. So this way with the black down, I, I can kind of keep that in mind, like, oh, I, I won't take the color too dark. And then that way you'll be able to see it more. All right, so I splattered it with some paint, just gonna like let it sit for a moment. So some of those spots kind of dry up a little bit and soak in. And then I just, this is one of the things I like to do, just kind of smear the, the dots, the spots that are still wet. Yeah, I think I'll, while that's wet, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of brown. So I'm just kind of doing a rough texture. One of the reasons why I didn't really need it to be um, dry. Okay. So, you know, if I'm thinking about layers, I've got the, the brain was the first layer, the um, yellow ochre was the second layer, the splattering was the third layer, now the brown's the fourth layer. So that, that quickly, I've got several layers kind of build up. Let me go ahead and dry this. No, it's a little curled, so I'll flip it over. So just hitting it on the back with the hair dryer helps flatten it out a little bit. Um, all right, so like I said, I have lots of layers. Let's go ahead and add some more. So I'm going to pull out my water-soluble pencils. Um, I use the Derwent Ink Tense pencils. I think I'm going to use this tan. I'm going to do a series of squares over here. And so I can go right over top of that image transfer. So I've done this transfer before. Um, if you've tuned into the series, you may have seen it or if you uh, watch anything else that I've done on YouTube. I've done it before, but like I said, this this is a good technique to do at any point. Um, another popular image transfer is using packing tape, and uh, 
but it's a shiny glossy material so really that's kind of like the the very top layer so it's kind of nice to be able to do something where you can use it as the bottom layer and kind of build up with it like in the image already Okay, so just kind of looking at that tan, I like the color. It's a little bit of like a, a golden kind of yellowish color. I want to bring a little bit of, bit of that over here. So I'm not going to do any shapes. I just want some of that color. So I'm going to just sort of scribble down, kind of shade in. And then add some water. There we go. Let's go ahead and dry that. Okay, so I want a little bit of something else in there. So i am got some plastic mesh and I'm gonna give it a little bit more texture. Um, so I'm gonna lay that down and I'm gonna stencil through this. So I'm gonna use my brush. I don't wanna have a lot of water. So I got a little bit of a, I got a paper towel here. Let's rinse that out, just dry that quite a bit. And I want something different. So I think I'm gonna hit up there's a red, you can't really see the paint, but I have a red up here. And I'm gonna tap it through. So I really, I wiped off the brush so that I wouldn't have a lot of uh, water, excess water in the brush. And that will keep the bleeding, the running of the paint to a minimum. So I don't usually don't mind if the paint runs and bleeds underneath the plastic, that's, I mean, watercolor paint's not the perfect thing to use for stenciling because it's, it's watery, it's runny. It's gonna run underneath, especially if you have a lot of, of paint. Um, but by drying it off a little bit, that helps. So if I pick it up, you can see how there's not a lot of running. It, there's not a big puddle. You can see the distinct things. And I, I really wanted the red to be more of an accent to it. So anyway. Um, but before that dries, I'm going to go ahead and just maybe get my brush a little bit wet. So the paint I use is the Derwent Ink Tense paints. And so when it dries, it's a little bit more permanent, a little bit more stable than regular watercolor. So it doesn't pick back up um, as easily as watercolor, maybe a little bit sometimes, especially if it's not totally dry. But you know, it gives me a bit of an accent, and then I can go ahead and try it. All right, so I've kind of done these squares because I have something in mind. Let me pull out. So I, in my box of fodder, I have all these like bingo cards from uh, my wife and I going to do some, um, going to a fundraiser for uh, an animal rescue that we, that we help with. And uh, so they always have this like, these bingo nights at uh, some of the local breweries and such. So we've gone there a few times. And so I just always like the cards. Yeah, just flimsy newsprint. 
And I know some folks are probably like, oh, newsprint, that's not acid free. I really, I, I don't concern myself with the archival quality of it. And I know some that kind of drives some people crazy. And even with the uh, couple books I co-wrote about visual journaling, some people kind of have brought that up and it's like, you know, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I, you know, it's like, if this artwork survives past the time that I die, I said, you know, that'd be awesome, but I'm not going to be around. I don't, it's going to be up to the curators and, uh, you know, the conservators to like worry about making sure that stuff survives. Um, so yeah, I just never really have concerned myself with it. So I just like these kind of random numbers. I don't know, there's just something about it that I've, that I've liked and I've used these numbers quite a bit. And I just, you know, that idea of repurposing, but then also just knowing like, okay, this is from, from those bingo nights and now, you know that, but, you know, somebody who sees his artwork might not know that. They like, oh, but, you know, so it just creates more of a personal connection for me. So those are going to go there. I got to grab out my glue paper. Not really sure what I did with it. So I usually have it right here. Uh... I think I must have hidden it. <laughs> That's all right. Um, yeah, don't know where it is. So I just have this scrap of uh, index card that will work. I mean, I could glue on my surface here. It's just paper, but then my surface is covered with glue. So a little bit of glue stick. You can see how that glue stick is really blue. I, um, while I was traveling, I used up my old glue stick and grabbed a new one. And because that's what I like about the Uhu, it's blue, but it does dry totally clear. It really helps me see how much glue I have on on a piece. All right, so the layering's getting there. Um, I think what I want to do is I want to get some nice bold lines. So I've got a lot of, you know, a lot of visual strength over here with these dark, dark numbers. The um, the brain really kind of pops out. I'm really going to try to help balance stuff out with some really strong black lines. So just make some really thick lines around the numbers. So I'm using a Faber, Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen, and this is a, an M point. So I guess it's kind of like a medium fine point. So it's like a 0. 0.7, I think it's a 0. 0.7 millimeter. So, you know, those really thick black lines just bring a lot of pop to this, to this side. I'm gonna have to balance it out over here and do something.
So sometimes I find with going around these collaged elements that some of the glue may have oozed out. And so sometimes that gets into the tips of the pens. Um, also the pigment. So since I put down a lot of that ink tense pigment, that can kind of work its way up into the tip, especially these tips are um, kind of fibrous. And so they can kind of trap some of that stuff. But you can really see how that, that makes that side pop out, but this side's really kind of not balanced. So I'm gonna bring in, just trying to decide how I wanna do this. Um, I think I wanna bring in maybe something from the top. So I'm thinking of kind of how to balance it, but then also how to make it a really kind of visually dynamic composition. And so I always try to think about having stuff come in from the edge in kind of a printer term, we call that bleeding the edge. So like when you print something, say that you're gonna print a poster or you're printing um, a book, you know, and you, if, you, if that book, like say, say you're talking about like a graphic novel and so you have color that goes all the way to the edge of the paper. Well, you actually make your artwork a little bit bigger than how it's gonna be trimmed because a lot of times in printing, something gets trimmed and it's not always exactly the same. So you have to have like this little like area this margin for error. So that way when it gets trimmed, you don't have like this white line at the edge. So that's the idea is that I don't want, I want everything to kind of go, make it look like it's going off the edge of the paper. That's one of the compositional things that I do, do a lot. Now, like me you and know, my brain doesn't, but it, I mean, it could have. Okay, so those thick lines really kind of help start to balance it out. And then I'm bringing in some lines over here that are gonna go off the edge over here. I might end up bringing a line in, but I'm not quite sure yet. Um, but kind of looking at this, I like the, that tan around there. So let's go back to my tan pencil. And so I'm gonna bring that around these areas. Even though I put some of that tan over here, it's kind of light. So I'm gonna do some of that darker shading. And this is just plain water that I'm using on the tan. I could use watercolor paint. So sometimes using a contrasting color of watercolor paint is really interesting with the watercolor pencils, the water soluble pencils. Okay. So that really kind of helps bring some balance. We'll hit that with the hairdryer. Okay. I do feel like I want to have a long black line. I'm gonna go back to this grid, but instead of paint, I'm gonna use one of the pit artist pens and 
Let's go in and trace some of these. And because this is a super fine point, I'm gonna get these little tiny squares. I think I want some more. There we go. Thinking a little bit more, a little more color. Let's go back, get some of that red that I used earlier. So that red over there really kind of makes that side pop. But then I feel like it's kind of balanced by the numbers over here. I was thinking like, oh, maybe I'll paint the numbers red. But I like the contrast, how light that is. So I don't think I want to do that. Um, but then like this is light, this is light, then these are light kind of helps kind of kind of make it even. Um, so let's go ahead and dry that. All right, and I think I'm gonna call this one done. Just go ahead and sign the bottom. All right. Okay, another Mixed Media Monday in the bag. I uh, hope you appreciate it. And um, thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions or comments or concerns, or if you want to see something, or if you want me to address something, or if you want to, whatever, just, you know, pop them in the comments and um, I'll try to try to address them and answer any questions you have, or maybe uh, in a future episode, maybe, you know, take some of the suggestions on things that you might want to see, uh, see me do. And um, yeah, so really appreciate you being here. Um, you know, make sure that you're checking me out on online, on social media and such. And uh, yeah, great to be back and great to be making again. And thank you so much. And as always, happy creating.